Um, uh, do you know what uh, Nazoru means? Test. Yes, I can hear you. Kikoide. Can you hear me? Hello? 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 Are you okay? I can hear you now. Okay. Yeah, I okay. had some issues, but okay. yeah. <laughs> I can hear you. I can hear you. So that's good, at least. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. what does Nazoru mean? Nazoru. Um, I mean, I heard it before, but I kind of forgot. Yeah. So it's kind of similar to what's going on in this picture. What do you think it means? To trace. Yes. Uh, what's another meaning that this, this could have? So tracing's not wrong. I just it, it can also mean like to follow, mm. but it's like the tracing version of it. Nazoru. So tracing is probably a better way to think about it. Um, what would be the must form of this? Nazorimasu. Yep, nazorimasu. And do you know what a yubi is? Yubi is, or they're your fingers, basically. Yeah, good job. So, um, can you do me a favor and read this? Uh, to do katsu. Katsu. Kya. Kya. Tozen ani ga. To do hini. Hini o ageta. Totsuzen is what's in the middle. I'm looking for a pen. Totsuzen, ani ga hime o ageta. Nice. So, kya, this right here, is an example of a hime. Sound Kya. Sound effect. Um, kind of. <laughs> so, kya in Japanese is a feminine scream, like, ah, in English. But kya tends to have you more feminine. Gya would be a little bit more um, masculine. Kya! Yeah. That's why Annie goes, kya! Um, so what do you think he may means then? He may probably means a scream. It does mean a screen. What does totsu zen mean? Totsu zen. Mm -mm. So it's not totsu zen. Means suddenly. Totsu zen. Mm -hmm. um, so ageta is just a verb that goes with he may. It basically insinuates that they it was loud. Basically, because ageru is like upwards and can be used with um, letting out noises and stuff. So, kya totsuzen, ani ga hime o ageta is ah! Suddenly, ani screams. So, can you do me a favor and read this sentence right over here? Um, it's ga nihon ni it's de mitai ni. Or just mitai. Itte mitai. What do you itte think? Mitai. Do you have any guesses? It's ka nihoni itte mitai. Um, so it's ka nihoni itte mitai. So you want to read Japanese? Or no, so not read. Let's that'd say. be yomu. So let's figure out what this iku verb means. Iku. Iku. Mm -mm. From ikimas. Start or to try? Um, it doesn't mean the start. Iku or ikimas means to go, like physically to go somewhere. To go. So itsuka is one day. So one day I want to go to Japan. So mitai here means I wish for this to happen. So I want to do this. 
いつか日本に行ってみたい。Ooh, I want to go to Japan one day. It is very important for this to be てみたい in order to get the wishing connotation. Because you can see みたい have other meanings in different contexts. So,、mm. てみたい means I want to go.、Um, how would you say, I wish I could meet a dinosaur? We have きょう and あう right here. So, I wish I could meet a dinosaur. Yeah.、Mm-hmm. So, きょう I wish I could meet a dinosaur. Well, the dinosaur is in the subject here. So I can't put what. You're correct. <laughs> wow, right here would be the I. So it'd be like, Ore wa. If, if you were talking, perhaps, or Boku or Watashi. I want to go How do you get te form from ao? Do you have any idea? Ah, a te. Yeah, a te. So, ore wa kyoryu ni a te mitai. Means that I, male, want to,、uh, I want to meet a dinosaur. Okay, so let's read this part first.、Mm. Jack, what? Put I no don't know. Tsubasa, oh, you be there now. Zori Nagara, Utori to by Bia 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 We've seen that a couple of times, I think. It's、uh, Tsubu Yaku is the dictionary form, and it has. What, what kanji character do you think is important? Like, what, what radical in that kanji do you think is the most important?、Uh, the kuchi. It is the kuchi. So, this has to do with the mouth. Tsubuyaku means to mutter.、Mm. To mutter. Tsubuyaku. So, the way in which they muttered was utori, which is kind of like absent mindedly, but in like a spellbound kind of way. So basically, there's no thoughts going on in your brain, but you're very like staring at something, very like staring at it, you know? Yeah.、Oh. Um, so, Nagara, what does Nagara mean?、Uh, well. Yes. So, what is he doing while muttering? He is. You be t h e Nazori. So he is kind of tracing along with his finger. Yes. And the thing he traces is a putera dan no tsubasa. Do you know what a tsubasa is? Tsubasa.、Uh, wings. Yes. So he tra- while tracing the wings of a putera dan, which is a picture inside the book he's reading. He mutters kind of like absent mindedly, spell bondedly. This. Let's see. What does he mutter? Ah, hon mono, putaira no don ni, atte mitaina. Ah, hon mono, putera don ni, atte mitaina. So this na and this ah are basically both vocal like sighs. Ah, ah. Filler words, yep.、Yeah. So, what does Honmo no Putarada ni Atemitai mean? It means.、Hmm? Hmm. I want to be a dinosaur, kind of, or all the、hmm. Putarada. Exactly. And Honmo no here means a genuine, like the actual thing. So, he doesn't just want to look at pictures. He doesn't want to meet a robot. doesn't want to go to the museum and see the bones or something. He wants to re- see the actual. Genuine article, actual、um, put it on.、Mm. But yeah, in English, we would probably not use hon mono 
I want to meet an actual pedal dog. Like, like you could say it. it sounds a little weird. Mm. So there's lots of ways to order people in Japanese. This is one way. Can you read this word right here? Hashire. What do you think the dictionary form is of that word? Um, hashite. It's actually hashiru. Maybe, um, hashiru. But hashi, um, te would be correct because it's hashirimas. So this right here would be the te form. Hashite. So hashiru. So mm -hmm. if something is of the, um, basically these are u verbs. U verbs. They, the, the last character gets an e eh added to it. For example, yomu is a dictionary form for to read. How do you, how would you turn that into ordering somebody? How would you order someone with that? Like read, read right now. Hmm. Eh. Hashire yomu or something. Oh no. Uh I'll do Yomu something. It it starts with a yo, but actually yome. 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 Um uh, probably no one would really say that. It's kinda of weird to be so aggressively yelling at someone to read something, but yome would theoretically be it. So you see the M here from Mu? Mm became meh. So what we're doing is that we're adding eh to it. Yo me. How about hiraku, which means to open? How would you make that into an order? Uh, hirake. Yes, hirake. Exactly. Um, a different option is adding ro, which is for um, do verbs. For example, taberu becomes tabero, tabero. Or suru verbs um, become shiro, like in skip shiro. So how would you say um, stop that right now, which is this word and is the dictionary form of that. Stop that right now. Ikagen ni shiru. How would you make that into an order? Ikagen ni shiro. Yep, ikugen ni shiro. Uh, specifically, it's kind of like stop messing around, specifically. Ikugen is kind of like the stop messing around. Nice. Um, so, let's start. Let's read two at a time so that the conversation flows a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, どうしたんだ会場が。どうしたんだ会場が。Do yeah. you know what どうしたんだ means? Mm, like how? Close. In this context, it's like, what is like, why? So specifically, this is more like, why did you yell? Basically, because a second ago, um, Annie went, kya! So, doshtanda is basically, why did you go, kya? But in English, you wouldn't say, like, what, what, why did you do? Like, we wouldn't say that. So, in English, we'd say, what happened? But this is more like, why did you? Why? That hmm. noise. And the reason for why is that a kya, kaiju, let me ga, ga iru, this ne. Kaiju ga iru. What do you think that means? It's a dinosaur. Exactly. So now let's just do one. What does Jack respond to that with? Mataka ikage ikagen ni shiro yo. Yes. Mataka. So what do you do? You know what mataka means? It's like again. Exactly. Again, because earlier in the story, she did the same thing, which is like, oh, brother, there's a dinosaur. I mean, there's a monster. Got to go run in the forest. Let's race. So he's like, mataka. Once again, ikagen ni shiro yo. So what does ikagen ni shiro mean? Ikagen ni shiro. 
So like, stop messing around. Exactly. And this yo right here is basically, is like a vocal question mark is how I like to describe it. It's just like, you, it's basically saying like, you know, you know, you should stop that. Like, it's not the time for messing around. Um, and then what does Annie respond with? うそじゃない。本当に怪獣が言ったのよ。うそじゃない。Do uh, you know what an uso is? Uso is a lie. Exactly. So what does uso janai mean? It's not a lie. Exactly. 本当に怪獣が言ったのよ。What does that mean? Uh, it really is a dinosaur. Exactly. There really is a dinosaur here, you know? Wow, here's our dinosaur. This is what a Pteradon looks like. And um can you read this word for me? Uh Kyodai. What's Kyodai? I thought it was a brother, but So that's not very elephant. you're correct. Um Kyo Kyodai with a long O is brothers. Or actually, it's siblings. Like it's it's kind of gender neutral with an, with it most likely being brothers. But that's a long old <laughs> kyodai. This is short. It's a short show. Kyodai. So it's a short baby. <laughs> the most important thing is the second kanji. Kyodai. Mm -hmm. Is that for elephant? Well, an elephant is the example of something chodai versus a chisa na nezumi. Chisa nezumi. Chodai na zo. So chodai means huge. Not just big, but huge. Huge. So that's a very illustrative word. Like the size of an elephant rather than a relative bigness. Because oki can just be relative. But kyodai tends to be an actual, like, bigness. Mm. Uh, do you know what a ku, ku, kuchibashi is? Kuchibashi. So, like, an eagle's beak? It's any kind of bird beak. Kuchibashi. Mm. Um, how about yogogiru? Yogogiru. Mm -hmm. To walk, kind of like strolling. Slow. Example, I guess. It's not walking. What is this thing that they're walking on? Ah, uh, sidewalk. So this is oh, not sidewalk a sidewalk. It's like crosswalk. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why is it sidewalk, but yeah. Um, to cross. So to cross the road, you need a sidewalk. But yeah, so yo yo giru is to cross. It's from cutting and horizontal. Like laying down horizontal. So to cut horizontally is to cross. Right? Mm. So the cut horizontally. So this kid right here is doing this verb, yokogiru, crossing. What would be the te form of yokogiru? Yokogite. Oh, that's Oh, that is okay. That was perfect. Yep. Um, next, I don't have a picture of this, but toka, togaru. Uh, togaru means to like poke out. For example, this one is here, this this right here is poking out of the bird's face, would be a kuchibashi. But anything can, you know, poke out of something. Hor, if, if this guy had horns, those would be poking out. Pok, togaru. What would be the te form of togaru? Togatte. Yep, togatte. So something that pokes out. This is a kanji, which has small big in it for some reason. Togatte. So double checking, what's kyodai? Kyodai is naturally big. Yes, very big. Big, big, big. Okay, let's see. Let's read the first sentence. Uh, sono toki kyodai na ikkimuno ga mado no soto o yokogitta. Nice. Do you know what an ikimono is? An ikimono? Um, ikimono. Oh, wait, I know this. Ikimono. Ikiru, like... the opposite of shinu. 
Oh, opposite of an inu. So like oh, sinu. No, sinu. Not sinu. Not sure what sinu is. Si, 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 si. <laughs> you know what a sinigami is? Uh, angel of death. Yes. Specifically, sinigami is a god of death. <clears throat> Kami, right here, is god. And she is death. She knew is to die. So e mm. oh, she knew. Yeah, she knew. That makes sense. Yeah. Is to die. So what's the opposite of dying? Uh living. So that would be so like we have a living life soul. inu. Yes, an inu is an example of an ikimono, which is a thing that lives. Ikimono. And it insinuates it's not really a human because the mono, like if it was a, if it was iki mono like this, that'd be like a living person. But it's mono like thing or creature, thing, like yeah. bake mono, mono. monster has a thing that is changed. I think is what the or unraveled item bake mono. So yeah, iki mono is a living creature. What do we know about this living creature? え、その時兄弟、大阪へ。あ、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、
got a long beat. Nice. Nagaku Togata uh, Tosaka. So Tosaka is like this thing on a bird. Like chicken. Chickens have Tosaka. It's mm. called a crest if you knew that vocab word. Crest. Didn't know that, but yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> that's super helpful if you see the word crest. So yeah, it's the thing on the Niwatori. It's kind of web boom. So what does Nagaku Togata Tosaka mean? Togata uh, Tosaka. So a long crest. Mm. What does Togata mean? Togata. Togata. Uh, it was, what was that? That was something I said before. It mm. is. So if you look at a Tosaka, is it like flat on their heads or is it to togataing? It is togatai, I guess. So like does uneven. it. Uh, togata means to protrude out of something, like to stick out. So <laughs> it means it kind of like sticks outward. So yeah. theoretically, um, this thing down here, for example, it's kind of lying flat. So like dogs, you know, some dogs might have their ears that will be all to togata, which would be like pointing out from their body. Other dogs might have their ears down, pressed against them, you know? Mm. You're talking about ears. So this right here would be a protruding ear. This is a not protruding ear. So it just means like you have the body of the creature and something's going like out of it. Yeah. You can kind of think about it like pointiness. Pointiness. So it means you got a large thing and we got Tosaka that's kind of pointy. So if you look back way this way to the picture, we can see the Tosaka over there a little bit. So it has like a pointy hat right there and then it has its beak. So the Tosaka is very pointing out. Mm. Do, do, do. Um, let's see. What else do we know about this Ikimono? Uh, okina. Komori no hana no yu na tsubasa. Yo. So, yo. Na tsubasa. So the part you start with is tsubasa. What's that? Tsubasa. Um, wings. Yes. What do you think this yo is doing here? Yo. It's emphasizing the wings. That's a good guess, but no, it's being is. Are these wings bat wings? They are komori. No. Komori means bat. Mm, so it's bat wings. Are uh, uh, did is this ikimono a bat? It is. It is not a bat. It is not a bat. So how would it have bat wings? It has. Wings similar to bats. Yes, yona is used for similar. So wings like a bat. Mm. Um, what does oki mean? Oki means big. Nice. So they're doing a weird thing here with this comma to use okina in order to emphasize how big the wings are. It, the okina in this specific instance, because they have a comma here, is describing the tsubasa, not the komori no hana. Uh, theoretically, if this comma wasn't here, it would be saying like a big bat's wing, but this is saying big wings like a bat. Because this comma is separating this out, basically. And we just got this tsubasa. So, okina tsubasa, right? Okina tsubasa. I guess that holds more emphasis. So yeah, it, it just a lot of times okina makes it like kind of like a more aggressive if you're taking an e adjective to describe something. But there they say oki. They could have just said oki uh, komori no hara no yona tsubasa, and the meaning is basically the same. But if this didn't have a comma here, the meaning would change. If there mm -hmm. was no comma here, what would this mean? Okina. Uh, so basically, like. Big bat, no. So wings similar to a big, big back. Yes. Big bat. Exactly. Could so make the describing of Oki as in a bat, which really doesn't change the meaning that much. 
But theoretically, if Okina bat, if there were big bats in the world, then it'd be like, oh, it's like the bats of those big. It, it'd almost be like this talking about a Pacific uh, komori that has very big wings. <laughs> but yeah, perfect. Um, and then Jack goes, oh, Honmo no putera don't, which is, oh my goodness. What does honmono mean? Do you remember? We heard that not that long ago. It's a real thing. Yeah, the actual genuine article. Mm. Oh, yes. This is a word that I've noticed you had some struggle with, ue and shita. Which one of these means above? Ue. Yes. Which one means below? Shita. Yep, because the kanji, if it goes below, it's below. If it goes above the line, it's above. Yeah. Nice. Um, do you remember? Uh, wait. Do you remember what kind? What happens if there's te form in the middle of a sentence? So this sentence says, "Jakumo sanataka no ryuko yuka ni oite chouryu zuka no hiraite mita mite mita hiraite mita." We have te form here in the middle of a sentence. It, 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 with a comma. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I guess that would refer to. What that refer to? It's a form. way to connect two clauses or too many sentences. Such um, I'm not uh like in English we have but and however. So, like, we, d we don't have very many in English. <laughs> mm. So, like, so sentence, sentences. Yeah. Is this a but or an and, would you say? This is a... Oh, yeah, true. It is an and, I think. It is an and. And it's the most, like, andish and ish of all of the... Um, ways that you know there's like multiple ways to make and in japanese this is the <laughs> most what this is the one that's the most similar to the english and like for example to will insinuate other things this doesn't really insinuate anything you know to some extent there's some idea that this happens first and then this happens but they don't have to be related they, they could theoretically happen at the same time, but the idea is that's the first and the second. Like, it's, it's just like the English and. So this is saying Jack puts down his backpack to the floor and then he picks up a book. Or you could just see and he picks up his book. It doesn't even need that and then. You could, it could be then or not then. Like, it's fine. It's very much like and. Um. So let's, Read the first sentence. Uh, Jack uh, mado, mado e kake yo de soto o mita. Kake yo de. This is a pretty big word. Do you have any idea what that could mean? My hint is hashiru. Hashiru. Interesting. Kake yo de. Sounds familiar. I know I've gone through this word before. It's, it's not too a open common doors. word in Japanese. Uh, what do you say? It's not to open a door or something like that, right? It's not to open the door. So, okay. yoru from yote means to get close to something. Okay, yote. And then kake from kakeru means to rush. Basically. To rush. So we have to get close and to rush. What do you think it means? To like close the distance? Basically, it means he ran up to something. But mm. um, kake makes it like more like rush kind of feeling like, <laughs> well, hashiru would be a little bit more. Um, I do, I guess. Just to run. <clears throat> um, kakeru is kind of exciting. Like, ooh. Kakeyote. So it kind of has like a, I would say a positive con connotation. So you wouldn't really use kakeyote in a bad way. Like if some monster was running at you, you would not use kakeyote to say it rushed up at me. But if like, 
Pikachu decided to rush up into Ash's arms. This is Daijoubu. Mm. Um, which is just, I know this shows up in a sentence like that because I read Pokemon not that long ago. Um, so yeah, this is the rush up to. Where did they rush, where did Jack rush to? He rushed to Soto Omitai. To the window? Yes, he rushed up to the window. Then we have te right here. What's that telling us? And. Yes, and what did he do? Soto omitai. So he went outside to look. Or he looked outside. He looked outside, yes. So Jack rushes up to the window and looks outside. What does he see? ポテトトンがあ、すごくすげかりくの森の。フロッグクリークの森の上を飛んでいる。飛んでいる。So he saw uh, a pterodon on top of Frog Creek. Yes, it oh, was on top. Yeah. What was it doing on top? It was tondeiru. Yes, which the dictionary form would be tobu. And that kanji shows up in hikoki, you know that word, which is a kikai. <laughs> that you have to know to in order to get to Nihon. So it's like, oh, like here, kind of like an airplane. Oh, uh, yeah. Hikoki is airplane. Tobu means to fly. So you're soaring in there. Yep. So, yep. The Puteradon flies above the forest of Fog Cre Fro Frog Creek. Nice. Here's some more vocab words. Let's start with Nami Utsu. What do you think Nami Utsu means? Nami Utsu, a pulse? What, 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 is, what thing is a pulse? A, well, I'm not sure what that's called. Like math. <laughs> this is called a, like, a wave. Specifically, this is like a sine wave, I think, or something. I don't know. I don't know my math, but this is a wave. Thing. Uh, Nami Utsu is also used with like water waves as well. Any kind of thing that waves, it's the same as English. Uh, not waving your hand, that, that doesn't count, but doing the wave would count. Mm. So yeah, not, not, not this, but this, which includes, you know, water. Nami Utsu. Uh, the kanji is Nami and utsu, like utsu is like the hit, and nami is like wave. So nami utsu is wave, like the verb, not the noun. So this is like a verb. So what would be the te form of nami utsu? Uh, nami te, I think. Yep. Nam, nami utte. Nami utte. Uh, do you know what tabi means? Tabi ni. Hmm, tabi ni. Tabi ni. Tabi ni. Oh, that's the wrong tabi. The same kanji as an ichido, if you've ever heard that. <laughs> like, mo ichido yitte karasai is a common phrase. Mm -hmm. Or, um, we've seen nando mo, most likely. Nando mo. Or not. People I talk to have, this is a, nando mo is a very common word. Yeah. Um, so, tabe ni and nando mo are very similar. Um, but I'm going to start with uh, ichido. Ichido means one time. So, mo ichido itte kurasai means say that one more time, please. Mm. Um, nando mo means many times. So, ichido, one time, nando mo, many times. Tabi ni, which has the same kanji, means every time. Mm. So basically, ta this right here kind of means like times, something occurs. One more time, many times, every time. But not time hai. like jikan, but it's not jikan, something occurring. 
occurrences that count. Um, kaze ga okoru. What do you think that means? Kaze ga okoru. So the wind is okoru in. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what okoru means? My uh, okimasu is very similar. Okimasu. So, like, it's. That's the wrong kanji. Pushing, not pushing is also. Uh, Okiru. It's like. Asa da yo. Okire. <laughs> it's morning, wake up. Um, Okiru oh, right. means to wake up, and okoru means to happen. <clears throat> um, the link between them is kind of like interesting because it's kind of like like earthquakes like wake up they start to happen or your day doesn't start until you wake up so nothing happens until then so that's like the occurrencing word so okiru is a very common word in Japanese and it means to happen so something happens uh, it tends to be like Something you can't help happen, like for example, I told you, earthquakes happen, tsunamis, okorus, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, kaze okoru means like the wind blows, basically, but it insinuates it's going to be like a strong wind, kind of, especially if like the word tsuyoi shows up with it. So, the wind begins to blow, basically. Hmm. So, what does tabi mean? Tabini. Tabini means every time. Yes, and how about nami utsu? Nami utsu means uh basically like that wave. Yeah. A yeah, wave. a wave, any wave. Um, so let's read this sentence. Okina maso o ugo kasu da bini kaze kaze ka ukori. Kino because it's like key. Mm, it's, it's part of a key. What part of a key do you think? It's a it physical a part branches. of the key. Yes, a branch. So kino eda is a branch of the tree. And zawa zawa is, what do you think? Like, what is it? Not what it means, but what is it? It's zawa Not zawa sounds like a sound effect. Yep, it is a sound effect. And it's a sound effect that branches of trees make when they nami utsu. What do you think that means? Nami utsu. Um, nami utsu. It is a wave. Yes. Yeah. So you is know, like when it is wave. So you know, like when people like hold their arms together and do the wave with their arms. Mm. So imagine trees doing this. So the wind can do this to trees, where the way basically the tree is kind of like shaking back and forth, like in a wavy like way. So basically, it's very tuyoi. Um, so we have an okina tsubasa. What is that? An okina tsubasa. So a very big tsubasa. Um, what was tsubasa again? Hmm. Oh, bat wing. Or just, sorry, wings in general. Just wings in general, yep. So a big wing and then ugo, ugokasu. Do you have any idea what that could mean? Ugokasu. Ugokasu. Uh, we did this. Ugokasu. It is... Do, do, do. Like... Oh, it is poking out. Uh, yeah, you haven't seen the word before. Uh, I can't illustrate it, but it means to move. To move? Oh. So it moved its wings. So in this case, it's probably flapping them, right? So the then we have tabby. So we're describing the tabby 
as what does Tabby mean? It is um, every time. Yep. So every time these tsubasas ugokasu, kaze ga okorimasu. So every time tsubasa okasu, the kaze okorimasu. So every time the wing moves, the yes. wind kind of okori. Yes. So the wind like picks up, I guess. Might, might be like how we might say it. So with every flap of this birdie dies wings, the wind picks up and it flows into the trees nearby and the tree branches go you know, in a very like being blown away in the wind. And so it's in a very like Nami Utsu, like the trees are like, the tree branches are like wiggling. That's how um, windy it is. Um, so there's been a couple of times throughout this that you might have seen an E adjective end with ku. So this is, uh, in general, it doesn't really matter um, for like for you to know, because most of these you could just tell by context. For example, way over here, we had nagai kuchibashi and nagaku togata. So when it's nagai kuchibashi, what's kuchibashi? Kuchibashi. It is mouth. So it's a beak. Yes, which also means it's a noun. You know what togata is? Tsubasa. Uh, togata. Togata. Um, to poke out? Yes. This right here is a verb. To poke out. And this right here, so to poke out versus um, uh, beak. So you see, one of these is a verb and one of these is a noun. This nagaku, longness, if it's describing a verb, we get ku here. And when describing a noun, we get e. Nagaku, togata, nagai, kuchibashi. So this is saying some a very long protruded, protruding, protruding longly, basically, which sounds weird in English. <laughs> protruding longly. So in general, as I said, you, you got nagai, you know it means long, and obviously it's describing the thing that follows it. However, sometimes this can be, this can change the meaning of words. For example, um, kaburi o futa means to shake your head. We have shake head. Kaburi o futa. So if we say oki kaburi o futa, what do you think that means? Oki kaburi o futa. So basically, you're shaking your well, you're shaking your head, but it's like you have a big head. No, not yeah. big head. But. No, you're right. You're shaking a big head. Maybe like a bobblehead as like an example. Teeny body, huge head. However, hmm. what do you think okiku kaburi o futa? What do you think that means? Okiku. Um, looks like the same word. So it's very similar, but okiku, oki, which means beg, is describing something else than it was in the last one. And what's telling you it's describing is this ku here versus this e. So the second one is an adjective. Here it's an adverb. Yeah. So, okay. So I guess you're, how would you say that? Uh, so you can say it badly in English, it's fine. Let's do like bigly. Bigly. <laughs> like really bobbing your head kind of. On yeah. It's, it's a very aggressive bobby head. So he's doing the shaking of the head. The shaking part is being do, done very bigly. So it sounds horrible in English. Uh, in English, we would use a different vocab here. Maybe it's like massively shakes her head. Maybe. Might be the word we'd use. Well, over here is. So yeah, that's, you can see how that's like can be important sometimes. Um, so yeah, ku means describing verb, e means describing noun. Uh, da -da. Okay, let's read the sentence. Uh, Jack, 
タノロドンをよく見るとバドから浮きを浮くみを乗り出した。So there's probably quite a few words you don't know here. Let's start with o k i k u Is o k i k u describing me or nori dasu? It is describing the、uh, me. Nori dasta? Actually, no, nori d a s t a Yep, nori dasta. That's what's driving. So, me, you know what that means? Me is your eyes. Close. Me can mean I, but me, me can mean I, but me with this kanji means body. So、oh, it's like、cool. karada. It's、hmm. another way to say body.、Um, so, me o nori dasu. So, what Jack is doing right here is me o nori dasu. What do you think that means? Nori dasu. So, it's poking out. Basically, specifically, it means like to lean. Basically, without like leaning necessarily on something. It's like rather than your body being straight, you're kind of like bending it. But like it insinuates it's kind of like you're not like have your hands out or anything like that. You're just kind of bending out. Bending out.、Um, so he's leaning out the window, right? Mi o nori dasu. So, mado kara o kiku mi o nori dasta. What does that mean? So, mado kara a o ku mi o nori dasta. So he's kind of leaning outside of the window. Exactly. But- In an o l kiku kind of way. So this is a here, he's obnoxiously leaning out, right? Like, he, someone could like push him and he just is going to fall right out there. Choto abu sugi abu nai. Very, very dejunet. Abu nai. Wah, jaku. So that's this half of this. Let's. So, ignoring the toe, what does jaku wa puterada no yoku miru? What does that mean? So, jaku wa puterada no yoku miru. So, it's like looking really carefully at the puterada. Yes. Then we have this toe right here. How is the toe connecting these two、um, clauses, sentences? So, he first saw the puterada and then he started to lean out of the window. Exactly. And it kind of insinuates that if he didn't look at the pteridon, he probably would not have leaned out the window. Yeah, right? Because、yeah. this is a major way to lean out the window. It's that he's looking so well that he starts leaning out and he's like, oh my goodness, I want to get a better look. Would it look even more good? So it kind of means that if he didn't do action one, he probably would not have done action two. So it gives the toll gives a little bit of a cause and effect relationship. And that is where we'll be stopping for today before anything exciting happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is there actual pterodon? I'm not sure. What? Is there like an actual pterodon outside? Yep. That's, that's where we got this picture、uh, over here. This guy. <laughs> That's what he sees out his window.、Uh, honmono no p u t e r a d o n So he's, he's very、oh, surprised by that. Very much there. <laughs>